And so, Snortius finally returned to the jewel of his empire, the insurmountable walls of Snotantinople. The ominous feeling that dwelt in the greenskin's heart lingered. He picked his nose anxiously. But he pushed those emotions to the side for the moment. He had been gone for a few days on his conquest, and it was a wonder to see what had changed. The mushroom farmers had been at it, and now enormous fungi with wide caps sprouted all over Snotantinople. They grew thickly around the mud and wood huts of the city, providing a comfortable shade everywhere they grew. There were also a handful of snotlings that Snotius did not recognize. Likely, they sprouted in his absence. Three more grots emerged as well. This was good. Snortius needed more brainy grots to help him manage his ever-expanding empire. Two of them were always squabbling with each other and fighting. These two he called Tom and Jerry. The third was a brash, outspoken grot that called himself the Red Gobbo, whatever a gobbo was. Snortius would keep an eye out for that one. He could be useful. He could be trouble. Of all the little snots running around, there was one that caught Snortius's eye. He was wearing a tattered, blood-soaked rag as a sort of poncho. Snortius smiled a bit to himself. Looks like we got red shirt four boys. His line lives on. Snortius decided to seek out Pegleg, one of the oldest snots in the tribe who had been injured ages ago. Or rather weeks ago. And he had been kept out of the fighting, staying back in Snot Tantinople to manage the new snots that were popping up. What's the word, Pegleg? How are things in Snot Tantinople? Pegleg looked nervous as his eyes darted around. Well, boss, uh, there's something you need to know. Something new popped up. As Pegleg said this, a long shadow fell over Snortius, and the familiar feeling of dread sank into his heart. The greatest snot that ever lived turned to see the shape of a mighty orc. He must have sprouted a little while ago, because he was clothed and armed, carrying two mighty stone choppers fit for his massive size, and he wore primitive armor with bones crudely sewn onto the thick hide of some slain beast. He stepped toward Snortius menacingly. So, I heard about you. You's the biggest snot that ever was, huh? Snortiest the first. Snortiest the uncrumpable. Snortiest the unburnable. Snortiest this. Snortiest that. So that's you, huh? Well, time for you not to be boss no more. Cause if you're snortiest, then I's orkiest. And you lot belong to me now. You ain't Snortius, ain't ya? The orc stood a good head and a half taller than Snortius. And he'd be even taller if he stood up straight. Snortius steeled his nerves and tamped down his grottish fear. Well, mostly he tamped it down. Um, I'm, I'm not Snortius. Uh, 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 he's Snortius as he gestured to Redshirt Four, who did, in fact, have his finger jammed up his nose in a very snottiest fashion. Orcius looked skeptically at the tiny snot, before swiftly bringing his stone chopper down on the poor creature's head and sending him off to meet the forebearers of his name. So that's one snottiest down. Now I just gotta take care of that snottiest. Before the orc could attack, Snortius moved to ready his weapon. As he fumbled around, he dropped his last gun, which fired upon hitting the ground. 
Ah, the luck of Mork was with the snot boss that day, as the blast struck Orcius directly in the chest. Snotius' ears perked up hopefully, but just as the luck of Mork was with him, the strength of Gork was with Orcius, and he bellowed in defiance before charging Snotius. Whirr! Snotius had to move quickly. He had to trust his flashy looted gubbins from the Humies. Orcius was wielding stone choppers, but the snot boss had fancy dead odd metal choppers looted from the Humie worksheds. He had nabbed a cooking pot from one of the homes that now served as a helmet, and he also wore mighty flak armor that he managed to find from the home of an old retired guardsman in town. And because he had grown so much, the armor actually fit him without too much difficulty, which was lucky, because the stone axe of Orcius smashed into Snotius's chest with tremendous force, knocking the snot boss off his feet and sending him tumbling. The flak armor turned the force of the blow away and saved Snotius from being chopped in two. Struggling to recover from the blow, Snotius sat up, raised his ring, grinning. A look of confusion came across the orc's face, as he wasn't sure what Snotius was doing, as he charged in to finish him off. But he was caught by surprise as a las blast erupted from the digital weapon and struck Orcius in the shoulder, staggering him a bit and giving Snotius a chance to get back to his feet. But it did not slow him down enough. Orcius swung both of his stone choppers and slammed into Snotius with such force that the stone head shattered and the reinforced ceramic and metallic plates in the flak armor were completely destroyed. Snotius was flung like a rag doll, hitting the ground hard and skidding through the dust. The snot boss coughed up blood as he struggled to his feet again. Snotius was tough, but this was an orc. A full-grown orc. Fear and a bit of panic began to seep into Snotius's mind. Suddenly, Snotius felt a big lumpy head nudge underneath his arm as he looked up to see the big ugly face of Pog chomp his squig looking back at him. Gritting his bloody teeth, Snotius swung onto the back of his trusty steed, gripping the squig tightly with his legs as he charged and swung his own metal choppers at Orcius. But the large orc was surprisingly nimble and managed to step out of the way. But he could not escape Pog Chomp's jaws as the squig took a nice healthy bite out of Orcius's thigh. As the fight raged on, Dark clouds began to gather around Snotantinople. Anyone who looked up could see they had an odd green tinge to them. Some said that the gods themselves had come to watch the scrap, to see if the toughest snot in the galaxy could take on a full-grown orc. As Snotius clashed with his enemy, the orc let out a roar of frustration. He seized Snotius by the scruff of his neck right off of Pogchomp's back and delivered a powerful kick to the squig and sent it flying into the crowd of spectating greenskins. When you gonna learn, little runt? I's the orc. You ain't nothing but a weedy snot. I'm gonna be boss here. With that, the orc delivered a mighty headbutt to Snotius. Had Snotius not been wearing a simple pot on his head, his skull would have been crushed right then and there. But the blow still dazed and staggered him. Truth be told, he wasn't sure he had much fight left in him. Orcius dropped him to the ground and laughed, gloating over him. The orc opened his mouth as if to mock him once more. But Snotius was dead cunning and threw a handful of dirt right into the orc's face, right into his eyes, nose, and open mouth. The snot boss then hooked his leg behind Orcius's and sent the mighty orc tumbling to the ground on his back. 
Snartius was getting desperate now. He retreated, moving towards the great fire pit at the center of town. He pulled out his great spear and readied himself. If Orcius charged again, he hoped that the polearm would give him an advantage. That <coughs> was dead sneaky of you. When I find you, I'm gonna rip you limb from him. Orcius struggled and spat to get the dust and dirt out of his eyes and mouth as he charged after Snotius. The snot boss had a plan. He covered the tip of his spear in squig dung and then stuck it into the great fire of Snot Antinople. With this flaming spear, he aimed to finally slay this greatest of enemies. With a mighty heave, Snotius flung the spear. And Orcius simply plucked the spear out of the air and hurled it back at the ruler of Snotopia. The spear pierced right through Snotius's thigh and stabbed into the ground, pinning him in place. <laughs> What's the matter, little runt? Stuck in one place? Oh, you got nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. You may be better than me, but you's just newly sprouted. I killed everything I've seen. I killed every monster. I killed the humans and looted the great city. I fought the big bugs. I killed the river monster. I killed Skullback and took Skull Stamble. And if I'm gonna die, then I don't want you to forget the name of Snotius. You done gob flapping yet? Not yet. I got a message for you from the gods. Oh yeah. What's that? Up yours! Wah! This was Snartius's most dire hour. He raised the secret Humi digital weapon and fired it. Surely this would end Orcius. Surely the gods would not forsake him. But the ring fizzled as the last of its charge pack was depleted. Orcius simply laughed as he swung his huge fist at Snotius to end the fight and crush his skull once and for all. But Snotius was not finished yet. He ducked underneath the swing and rolled off to the side, pulling the spear free from his leg in one fluid motion. He wasn't ready to lay down and die just yet. Snartius positioned himself so Orcius stood between him and the fire. One push could end it. If Snartius was going to win or die, then he would do it with war in his heart. He lowered his head and plowed into Orcius's midsection. And the orc did not budge one inch. The larger orc reached down and grabbed Snotius by the waist with the intention of hurling him into the great bonfire. But Snotius squirmed out of his grip just as Orcius held him high above his head. Snotius began scrambling down the orc's back. As Orcius twisted around to try to grab the snot boss, Snotius leapt away and recovered his choppers that he had dropped in the struggle. The orc roared as it bore down on Snartius, and with the last of his strength, Snartius spun around, swinging his chopper as hard as he could, and struck Orcius directly in the neck, severing his head clear off his body. The orc's form teetered for a moment. Then Snartius, Breathing heavily, bleeding from his leg and mouth, cracked ribs, broken armor, pressed a foot on Orcius's chest and kicked him into the great fire, sending him back to Gork and Mork. Snartius the First, Snartius the Uncrumpable, Snortius the boss of all Snortopia. 
had defeated an orc. With all his strength spent, Snartius fell to the ground as the other greenskins cheered and screamed around him. He could barely hear them as exhaustion consumed every fiber of his being. And he let his eyes close with a great big grin on his face. For the reign of Snartius was far from over. No man do they call me, my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that one day you too might overcome your greatest obstacles to achieve your goals just as Snotius has. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about the imperial dreams of Snotius I. If you would like to support me, there are links below to my Patreon, PayPal, and Teespring. A big thank you to Eric Rayner, who provided the fan art for the final scene. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the link to the Growing the Tribe playlist to listen from the beginning, which should be appearing on screen right now. Thanks once again for listening. No Man Out.